So, you're living with somebody who's doing some annoying stuff. Let's fix that. Good mythical morning. You know how this works. You ask us questions on the internet. We look at them, we give you answers, and you take or leave our advice. Welcome to Take It or Leave It. Matt, working title. Not really a working Subject title. to change. Matt Inguglia asks, how do you deal with a roommate's annoying habits? Okay. Now uh, we're experienced here. We, we've, we've been roommates. We've been roommates. Not I anymore. I currently have a female wife roommate and then three younger roommates of Offspring. Very, Offspring roommates. ages. Yeah. Those are called children. Yeah, and it's more housemates. Not really roommates. One of them's in my room, it's uh, the wife one. But we were roommates through college uh, and uh, we had a couple other people who lived with us at different times. And uh, we're gonna, and he has annoying habits. And uh, we're gonna tell you, we're gonna go through a different, some different categories and give you, this is a, for instance, and this is how you can deal with it, some common things. Okay, very common when your roommate eats something that you have saved for yourself in a fridge or freezer. You know right. what I'm saying? You got something that this is my stuff and you ate it without asking and I gotta say first of all, we've been on the opposite end of this because we had a, a good friend named Greg who would get some premium stuff and one time he got some premium Edie's ice cream. Ice cream. And we had the communal Walmart ice cream. Like the big bucket. And we just got really excited one day. We ate half of his Edie's ice cream. Then we looked at each other and we were like, we got to fix this. We took the Walmart ice cream and we put it into the Edie's ice cream and we smoothed it over the top. Now Say the difference nothing. is the Walmart ice cream was really yellow and the Edie's ice cream was really white. So when he opened it up, he was like, you punked ate my ice cream. And he threw a soccer ball at us. That's what happened. That, that was an amazing day. <laughs> because the just the thrust of that ball, yeah, it, yeah. it hit Tim in the chest. Hit Tim in the chest. Uh, we were living with a guy named Tim and he got hit in the chest. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna recommend do not. And then we just looked at Greg and it was like, that was it. I, I just recommend that you don't do what Greg did. I don't think it should escalate that quickly uh, with the soccer ball. I recommend that you set a trap for your roommates if they're known to do this and you go preemptively switch something nasty out for something good and when they go for the good stuff, they get the nasty, they will learn their lesson. I don't have any particular ideas, but you get the the idea here. Put you know? the good and the nasty and the nasty and the good and, and you, you eat out of the nasty. The, you eat out of the nasty <laughs> knowing that it's good. Yeah. You and go for the nasty, you get and you leave the good to them, but it's actually reversed. Okay, here, here's another common one. You go to the sink, you're gonna prepare a meal or something, and you can't get to the, the needed sink parts because needed there's sink parts. all of this nasty, dirty dishes piled up on top. Yeah. You know, first thing, you, you should go to the person. This goes without saying. Yeah. You, you gotta go to the person and say, hey listen, it's your chore to do the dishes, yeah. or at least to do all these dishes that are yours, yeah. okay? So can we work this talk out? Talk first, talk first. But then if that doesn't work out, what I think you should do is I think you should take all those dishes, hmm. take them into his or her room. <laughs> room. <laughs> Dramatic emphasis for no reason. And then you build a minefield, starting right next to the bed, put down a little dirty plate, put down a fork, put down a pop -a pop -a pop back your way out of the room so that then when he or she opens that door, it's just a minefield of the dirty plates that they left in the sink. And they have to remove them in order to get into their room. They'll get the it message. It won't happen again. Get, or either that or they'll just walk on the plates. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. Here's another common one, overflowing trash can. You've said, listen, when the trash can is full and you're at home and you're the one who tops it off, don't do the push down thing and leave it in there for me to take out, but it's everybody's responsibility to take the trash out. You can it, do the push down, but there's a certain point when you, there's no push down you push, Yeah, and then it starts to pile up. I'm talking about piled up, you, somebody didn't do their job. Now, if you've had a conversation about them with them about this ahead of time, you can feel free to take it out of the trash can tie it up, push it underneath their bed, cut a slit in it so that the air can come out and they will begin to be overwhelmed with nastiness. Garbage juice. Nasty fumes. Uh, I just don't want, not the juice, but just the fumes will begin to uh, perforate from their, or permeate their room coming from their bed. They'll just think they got a stanky bed. It'll go about two weeks and then they'll find it. They'll be very mad at you, but let me tell you what, they won't ever cross you in that trash. I room. think that's overkill, okay? Really? I think what you need to do is you need to take the trash that is just on the top, like the the muffin top of trash. The top trash. Just take the top trash, take that and put it under the bed because that sends a message, 
This mm. is the amount of trash okay. that you slacked on your job. Top trash will take care of it. Top trash will take care of it. Put that on a t-shirt. t-shirt. Okay, Th this one is a little more specific. See if you can relate to this. You go into the bathroom, you're gonna brush your teeth or wash your face or wash your hands in the sink and you look down and somewhere on the, like in the bowl of the sink, there is a regurgitated mm. used dollop of toothpaste. <laughs> Just a little spittle. Solidified and stuck to that part of the bowl like a like a like a, a snail fossil. Uh, okay. Like a, it's like Yeah, it, I find those all the time. And then what do I have to first of all, how does this happen? Well, you spit in the sink and you miss the middle. But you don't you, you brush with the toothpaste. Don't it's like my kids put the toothpaste. Paste on top of the brush. They put it in their mouth and they go and immediately spit the whole thing out in yeah. the sink. That's my that's my technique. You got to smush. I tell them this. You got to smush the to toothpaste, toothpaste down into the bristles. You're not passionate so about that this, when are you? you start brushing, it doesn't just plop out. You're not you're not getting any on your teeth. And then I got to take the finger and go ee, 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 to get that thing off and to rush it down. You just can't waterfall some sink water on that thing and expect it to dissipate. It does not dissolve. You thought about this. So what's the solution, Linkster? It's nasty. Well, this is what you should do. If it's your if it's your kids, I don't know what you do. You know, whatever punitive method you use with kids. You're chewing gum now? I'm just taking a break. <laughs> is this, is this real, are you making a point or are you just chewing gum? Chew some gum, go to your roommate's car. Uh. If something come out of their mouth, get stuck on a sink, and then you gotta inky, inky, inky it off with your finger, well, sit in the driver's seat, take that thing right there, hey. put it on the steering wheel. Something from your mouth and something on their area. Same experience, they'll get the message. Oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> new, we I don't need know a new if guitar. I, can, I don't know if I can endorse For that. For our next mail, please mail us a new guitar. You know what day it is. You know what day it's it is. It's Thursday. And Thursday. And Thursday. Means means mail. All right. Check this out. I don't, know, I don't know how well you can see these. I'll try to turn them like that. I can hold a lot of this. Spin that. No, you gotta use the spinner. Well, it doesn't really spin when you do that. Dear Rent and Link, I'm hold them. my board friend and I love your show and look forward to watching it every day. Thank you. We've always wanted to send you guys gifts for Thursday mail days, but never knew what to send. When we saw this cool head pillow idea, we knew we had to make a pillow with your heads on it. We hope you like the pillows of your guys' heads and use them to scare people because they're pretty creepy. Sincerely, Emily and Hudson from Perrysburg, Ohio. Wow. <laughs> There's nothing creepy about this. All right, uh, I gotta say that I really appreciate this. I've always wanted to sleep on my face. And I, and I, and I like to sleep like this. And, I, and now <laughs> when uh, my wife uh, is home alone, and I go out of town, I'll be like, baby, don't worry. I got this. You can sleep on me. <laughs> you can sleep on my face while I'm gone. I'd like to, I'm gonna take this on planes. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna go to sleep. Uh, Look at that guy. He's got a conjoined twin that never separated. <laughs> that looks just like him. Yeah, he just has a head. I can feed him. He doesn't eat much. Yours especially. The way Not a lot of hair, a lot of face. The way it stretched your face. He you, needs a wig. Your nose got about four times the size as normal. Look at that, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> Thanks for liking and commenting on this video. You can support the show by checking out lynda.com. Listen, seriously, cool things to learn. You name it, you can learn it there, especially as it relates to wanting to do stuff like what we do. And you know you wanna be like us. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I don't think there's a, a Rent and Link course, but there's like video editing, photo editing, audio editing, all that type of stuff. Go to lynda.com slash Rent and Link for a free trial. You know what time it is. My name is Sarah Maris, and I'm a student at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke, and it's time to spin the Wheel of Mythicality. Thank you, Emily and Hudson, for sending the face pillows for us and our wives to sleep on. You get a Good Mythical Morning poster signed by us and available to the general public. 
at redlink.com slash store. Also, click through to Good Mythical More where we eat some straight from Sweden super salt. I think this is, this is challenge accepted. Good Mythical More. Uh, Rhett is slowly turning into a goat. You see this pillow? <laughs> yeah, I got one too. Yeah, yeah, you do, don't you? Is there something in your throat? <laughs> you trying? To... I'm sorry. Do you need the Heimlich? With my mouth. Yeah. Here, just open wide. It's like a sleeping bag stuff sack. So good, though. You're fired from the acting job. No, 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 the problem is it's, oh. it starts out horrible, but then it gets really good. You still look like you think it's horrible. 